What's going on guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel. I got the, uh, I'm sure you guys seen in my other videos, my snap on guy gave me a box full of older air tools, the metal air tools. I had a couple Mako ones in there, snap on ones. Um, thinking about rebuilding a few, maybe doing a couple on a giveaway, but I got an older IR-231 half inch impact, looking pretty bad. Um, you guys can see what it looked like here, I took a picture of it. These things sat under uh, my Snap-on guy's seat for years. I would always see him under there, but now that he retired, you know, he threw me them. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go ahead and rebuild this thing. I bought a rebuild kit for this thing, but it's gonna be JRC 54 rebuild style. We're not gonna just rebuild it. We're gonna mod it and customize it. So check it out right after this. You can see what some of them look like. Here's some of the other things. We've got a Mako, 3 8 air ratchet. We've got a drill in here, Chicago pneumatic, I believe. Another Chicago pneumatic. We've got a blue point, little uh, butterfly, 3 8 There's a couple other ones. But let's get over to the uh, Ingersoll Rand. All right, guys. So like I was saying, I took everything apart on it already, kind of broke it down, haven't yet took out the bearings. Um, still got all the grease in there and all that, but uh, cleaned off all the rust on the anvil housing that houses the hammer. This thing's got the dual hammer in it. It's a little bit of pitting, but uh, plan to do a uh, black bed liner on this. It's going to look nice. And then... On the body, you can see, customize it a little bit. Got the JRC 54 on there. Looking nice, kind of sanding it down. Seeing what I'm working with here, took the back off of it. Uh, sanded that pretty smooth. Got the JRC on this side. Gonna get ready to uh, get this one colored. Gotta change out those seals in there. And then the kit comes with uh, the new veins, new bearings, new gaskets, trigger spring, nice kit. Picked this thing up for about 20 bucks. There's the part number. But got everything kind of broken down here. We're gonna get everything cleaned up. All right guys, so I'm just gonna clean everything up here. I got some, uh, I got some 120 and 220 sandpaper and then I got a little, uh, sponge sanding block to kind of smooth everything out but just hit everything up any of the little gouges just kind of take down real smooth and then when I'm done just smooth it all out with the sponge this kind of contours takes the shape of it nice and smooth so Inside the housing here, I got some uh, ugliness. I'm going to try to polish that out. I don't know if you guys could see that. You can see right back there up top. I'm going to try to polish all that out. I got the Dremel out and some, some old uh, polishing compound here. Let's see if we can get that looking better. All right, guys. So the polishing wasn't going too well. So I ended up grabbing some uh, some thousand grit and fifteen thousand grit and sanding it smooth. And now I'm just gonna kind of repolish it real quick, but got most of it out. Looks nice now. Right, so I finished up some of the sanding for now. I got a couple parts here. I'm gonna clean up. You can see this one looks pretty bad. This thing probably didn't get oil too much. You can see all around there. I'm gonna try to clean up. I'm gonna try to use the rubber one and just see if I could get in there and clean some of that out 
kind of polish it up and then same with this piece go at this see what it looks like you don't want to mess up the metal too much you'd be surprised on uh, you'd be surprised what rubber can do to metal if you're too rough with it but it's cleaning it up all right looking good this side doesn't really matter but I clean that up too because the way it goes on is this part is what moves on there so I'm nice and smooth on there oh, bearing just popped off gotta change that anyways make sure all your little ports are cleaned out you can see the, the little oil port I'll make sure I'll blow through that and make sure that's cleaned out so the bearing gets properly lubricated and then we'll knock out this side this side I'm just gonna let spin on there not too bad I pop this clip off pop the bearing out clean out all that old grease because I plan on re-greasing everything see how dirty it was and then I do the same to this side and then clean out all the little ports and then this one I'm just gonna clean off clean up real real good clean out the little cuts in it so those spines can move freely in there I got the anvil here and I'm gonna put in the uh, the retaining clip these are the ones I use there's the part number they come on a new o-ring and then the metal clip I'll show you how I do these get a hard surface ready pull this old gasket out of here or o-ring out of here and if your retaining clips keep messing up or falling out it's probably because the, the o-ring needs to be changed out not just the clip and this comes with three or four of them in here I think three rings and three clips so put, first put the ring on and then get the clip out so basically what you want to do is just kinda lay it on a flat surface so you guys tighten the shot here and then just push down on it and it'll start like that to pop on and then you just push it on the rest of the way so here's all the parts laid out I got them all cleaned up got the rebuild kit gonna reassemble here got the pins cleaned up cleaned up the cleaned up the inlet got the coupling got the anvil all cleaned up got little oil passages in here you wanna blow them out for the oil so it gets lubricated into the hammers got the switching mechanism kinda of polish that up nice and chrome even polished up the, the bolt the hex bolt that bolts it together we'll be using Loctite on those and these clean these up too all set up and then I got these are the parts we're going to customize. We're going to hydro dip this. Got it all sanded, ready to go. We're going to tape it off where we don't want the, the hydro dip paint to go. Get this one dipped. Got the trigger. We're going to do something cool to this. And then the housing. We're going to bed line it. Let's get the new seals on the uh, the trigger valve. This is the trigger valve. We'll put a new seal and that, that kit comes with a new spring. Switch that out real quick. Alright guys, pretty basic on this. Just take the old spring off. Clean it up a little bit. Get the little o-ring off of there. I like to match it up, make sure it's the same one. That's good, that's the old one, that's the new one. Put the old one over here. Clean out all the dirt. 
Make sure all the holes are free, free and clear. Just twist the new spring on there. And then put the new seal on there. Just like that. All right, guys. So we're gonna try something. I got the trigger. You can see I drilled some holes in it. Um, lighten it up a little bit. Lighten the trigger. But we're gonna try to customize this trigger too. I got some green, uh, I don't know, 12 gauge or whatever this is. Um, actually, probably 16 or 18 gauge. I'm gonna run this through. You guys can see that's going on the face of the trigger. Plus it'll give us some accent color on there. Instead of painting the trigger too. Because being on a trigger, it's just gonna wear out. Give it a nice texture trigger too. So your finger doesn't slip. Gives it some color. So I threw a little, uh, got it all twined through. Threw a little uh, JB Weld in there. It's all tight. It's actually uh, quite comfortable too for the finger to wrap around and it gives it a little accent. Fits in there perfect still. All right, so I got my paints. We got, this is what I'm gonna do with it. I got my base paint for the body. Before I hydro dip it, we got the, uh, I picked up the Rust-Oleum truck bed liner stuff, coating for this part of it. And I also glued a rotor to it because I made a, a nice little display with an old distributor so when I'm spraying it I could just spin it so I get nice even coatings. Hey, keeping used parts around is beneficial after all, huh? Shake out the cans and get a light dusting on this now. Now we'll go back to the, the bed liner one. Got the light coat pretty dry. Hit it with another coat. I'm allowing about 10 minutes to dry between each coat. About to hit this one with the third coat. Go a little thicker with that one. I'll probably do one more extra thick one, and that's looking pretty good. You guys can see. It's like a sandpaper look for grip. I'm gonna lay the last one on pretty pretty thick and then let that cure for a day or two. And let's go on to this one. I got my first tack spray on this one. Get you guys zoomed in a little bit. Second coat, going a little thicker this time. Wait about 10 minutes and hit it again. So it's about 24 hours later. The paint had time to set up. Turned out nice. This one's completely dry. It's got a nice texture on it now. I'll let that finish curing. Getting ready to uh, hydro dip this now. I got my bucket set up. The uh, water needs to be between 90, 80 and 90 degrees. So here's the film I picked up. We got like gears design. It's got like a skull type design in there. I got another like mechanical car parts design like this one. We got some uh, carbon fiber pattern, some smoke design, and then we got the green smoke 
this is what I'm probably going to end up using on it. The green smoke, I just want it bright. Plus, I got plans for these other ones. We're gonna, if this turns out well, we're going to hydro dip some other stuff. And then you got the activator here. All right, guys. So I got the activator. I got the, the film. I never hydro dipped before. Got everything set up. Got the bucket set up right here. Watched a few YouTube videos on it, so I feel like I'm a pro now. You know, never never did anything, and then you watch a video, and you know, all of a sudden, you know, you could do brain surgery and all that stuff. Um, but I watch a good two, three, four of them. I think we can get this done, taken care of, um, right the first time. You want to get this thing set up, and I'll step you guys through it. But you want to, it's it's all in the way, the angle you dip it. So we'll see if we can pull this off. Let's get let's get this set up. Get it uh, set up. You want to make sure there's enough to uh, cover the whole piece that you're dipping. We'll probably do a good amount, maybe that much. You gotta fit the bucket too, so maybe I'll just do the whole size of the bucket there. And what they say is there's a shiny side and then a kind of a dull side, a flat side. They say you lick your fingers and whatever side sticks to your fingers is the side you want down inside the water. So the shiny side will be down. That's the side that's sticking. So the shiny side's down. So we get this taped off so it doesn't roll. See if we can get this pulled off. I hope that's enough. And you want to kind of lay it in the water and get out all the air bubbles. Get you guys close up here. So the way you lay it in the water, you want to try to make it to where all the air bubbles kind of come out as you're laying it in there. You want to let that sit in there for about a minute, 60 seconds. About 25 more seconds. And we're gonna hit it with some activator. Alright, there goes our timer. We're about a minute in. Hit this with the activator. Now you want to hit the activator straight down and it'll start to liquefy. Just one good coat. We'll see how this goes. We're gonna get it, we're gonna put it in kind of like a, an angle like this. You want to stay real slow and uniform until it's all the way in there. Shut up and sit down. There we go. Turned out pretty nice. <clears throat> I'm gonna let this dry off a little bit, and then you wanna put it in the sink and rinse it. So I rinsed it. After you dip it, you wanna rinse it in the uh, sink for like three, four, five minutes to get all the shiny residue off of it until it gives you like a dull color like that. Let's see if you guys can see that. It's like a dull shine to it. All right guys, so I got it all, all the excess water blown off of it. You can see the pattern, turned out pretty decent. I re-taped off the top, because I don't want no clear coat to get in there. I'm getting ready to protect it with some clear coat now. The front part turned out really nice. The bottom half, I'm actually gonna be putting a, uh, a different handle on it, so we're gonna go with a different texture towards the handle part but top part turned out pretty good. I'm gonna hit it with some clear coat now. All 
All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit this one more time with some clear coat. That would be number three. And then I'm going to go back and uh, grind out the JRC back to uh, the metal. And then I'm going to hit it a couple more times with some clear coat after I get rid of the green on there. So we'll show you guys that when I get there. All right, guys. So I let this dry for a few hours. I got the Dremel out. I'm going to try to very carefully just Dremel out the, uh, the letters here, just the JRC. And I don't want to mess up and slip it into the design and ruin the design. Let's see if I can do this. We'll start off slow. Get in there guys. I'm gonna hit it with a couple coats of clear coat now. Maybe another two, two or three thick coats and let this thing dry for a few days. So another 24 hours later, this is where we're at. The clear coat has had some time to uh, set up, so I took off all the masking, getting ready to do the last step here before we reassemble this thing. I got the bottom portion, we're going to dip in some Plasti Dip, give it a nice uh, grip texture. So I got three cans here, I'm just going to fill this cup up about halfway because it fits in there and then I'm going to dip it a few times maybe three times doesn't need to be super thick we'll get a nice uh, rubberized grip at the bottom there if you want to stir this stuff up guys And I'll hang this to dry for a few. Two hours later. So check it out. I got about three dips on it. Ended up pretty nice. A little wavy. Uh, Took some getting used to. You could see the layers right there. But got the trigger cut out right there. Kind of rolled it in there. Trigger should work just fine. I gotta I gotta open up the little pin in there. I'm gonna wait for it to fully cure. But turn out nice. So let this thing dry and get this thing reassembled getting ready to reassemble this thing the handles had time to cure I'm gonna start off by putting the uh, seals inside the selector pull those old seals out and switch them out there's seals in this this is pretty much how you put it back together a lot of pieces here some of the stuff I remember but all this little intricate stuff I'm glad they give you a kind of a destructions list how to reassemble it so I got everything set up I got my lube I like to use uh, the trans assembly lube I usually just put this on the the front and back bearing uh, inside the housing maybe a little bit on the hammers and that's pretty much it I use uh, air tool oil for the rest of it because um, pretty much what this grease does is it tends to just clog up those oil ports so 
I like to go a little bit light, you know, heavy on the bearings, um, you know, where these sit, and then pretty much on the hammers, and that's it. The rest is going to be air tool oil. So let's get set up and get this thing back together. Basically, these things are, are tapered on one end, and then it's got the little groove on this. They go across from each other, and then the tapers on the outside. It's just like that. There's the pins for it. And then what I like to do is get a little grease in here. You don't have to go crazy, but just a little bit, coat the inside of it. And we'll get the anvil in there. The housing I'll hit with some grease right on the inside here. And then where the uh, anvil sits, right in here. Make sure everything moves freely. And I'll hit a little bit on the top, keep the pins in there. And inside the spline. That's it. We'll get these seals out of here. There should be one on each end. These are kind of a pain. You can see there's one. The other side. There's the other one. And then I got a little cap here. Throw some air tool oil in it. I like to just throw the seals in there, the O rings in there. Get them nice and lubed up. Basically, you just want to shove it down in there, and then take your pick tool and try to get it into where it needs to be. Cut that one in. Put the selector down in there, and the speed control. I like to make sure this is nice and lubed up. The little hole there. There's a little spring, and if you guys are seeing that right there, and then we got a little ball in here. And if you guys can see that, what I'll do with this one is I'll use a little bit of grease, kind of like that. Just kind of try to pack it down in there. Pop the little spring in there, and I'll just set the ball, set the ball right on top. And the grease will kind of hold it in there. All right, guys, I'm just get this going in there pretty smooth. Make sure it doesn't bind up, or you don't roll the uh, the O-ring in there. That ball. We'll press down on it as we're pressing it in. Sometimes turning it helps a little bit. I got it in there. All right, and then this side of it, you got the back side, it's grooved. So you just want to line that up with where that's at. Um, so it's going to be this way. Use a little bit of Loctite. You'll probably want to use blue Loctite. All I got's red, and I don't plan on rebuilding this thing ever again. So just a little dab. Make sure that's nice and tight. All right. Grease up the bearings pretty good. I like to be pretty generous with it. Pack it in there real good. Now there's two different size bearings. You can see one thick one and a thinner one. The thinner one goes on the front there. Get it in straight. Here. 
I like to put some grease down in here where the grease fitting is. I'll throw a little extra grease on the inside because you got to heat this up with a heat gun to get that bearing down in there. There we go. So next step, I'll throw a little oil in there. That lube up the walls a little bit. Get this gasket down in there. Try to get it to line up with the guide. It's always the hardest part. I like to make sure these sides are real clean on this. This never wants to go in straight. Just try to heat up the housing a little bit. So this slides down in there. All right, guys. Oh my. That was a little bit of a fiasco there. To get that lined up straight, I actually had to use a piece of the hub tamer to make sure it dropped down in there uh, square. That's uh, probably the new roughest part here. Um, but getting on to the next step, just oil it up, and we'll get these veins in here next. I got, as far as the instructions say, there's a little groove on it and it's a uh, groove facing in. I've seen people do it a couple different ways. I actually, when I took it apart, the grooves were facing towards the back. So that's the way I'm going to put them back in there. the front bearing we line up with the guide pin here that should drop in no problem we're getting close um, the next one is these uh, these rings can't remember if it was this way yeah I think it was taper side down like that a little more oil in here. We got a gasket in here and this little uh, lock, uh, groove lock washer thing. So it looks like this goes on first, this way, and then the gasket goes on like that. And then we got our housing. This should only go on one way. So, just a drop. Looks like red Loctite was on there before. Get that started. All right, guys, we're getting there. We just got to get this trigger in now. Got our little pin here. Drop it in there. We got our trigger valve. Try to make sure it's straight as possible here. Love these little Nipix pliers. Step, put the little coupler on. All right, we'll get this thing cleaned up, show you guys what it looks like. So, here it is, all rebuilt. It's got the nice uh, rubberized handle, actually feels pretty nice too. Got that chromed out. The back of it, when I was actually reassembling it, I lost some of the design, so I just went back, sanding it down and painted it. Gives it a nice, a nice black look in the rear, in the back of it. But you got the JRC 54 in there, the green smoke. I like it. Turned out pretty nice, and it works well. Everything, everything moves in it. Sounds like it's got power. All works. 
Wow! So, not bad for being a rusty piece of crap to uh, back in action now. These, uh, these Ingersoll Rands are, you know, they're unstoppable, man. You could throw these across the shop and it'll break the floor before it breaks the impact. Really dig the, uh, the bed liner. My next one, I'll probably do more bed liner, maybe do the whole thing in bed liner with maybe a design on it or something like that. Um, or do it all in bed liner and then dip, hydro dip it and see how that turns out. Got the grease fitting, that turned out good. The selector, it moves. You can actually hear it click too, because the ball's in there. Got the screen in there, the trigger. Actually feels real nice. JRC 54 style. Turned out sick, like this one. All right guys, so I know this video is probably long. It took me a good, uh, I don't know, week, week and a half to actually go through all the steps rebuilding this bad boy. I uh, tried to get in there all like the key points, you know, when you're actually rebuilding it. I know the hardest part is getting those spline, that spline motor back in there um, straight. You know, it's, every time I do it, I, I, try to, I try to sand it down and make it smooth and, you know, put a ton of grease and, and lube in there thinking that, okay, this time I'm not going to have that problem. But every time it, it just cocks a little bit and it's hard to get in there. That's actually what ruined the design on the back of it, but it's okay. My first time hydro dipping, it didn't turn out that bad. I'll let this thing cure for a few more days. It's only been, you know, probably about two, three days since I actually clear coated it. So once it actually hardens after five, six, seven, eight days, you know, it should be decent, be able to withstand, you know, chipping and all that stuff. But I got a couple more to do. I got that uh, Blue Point Butterfly. I got the Chicago Pneumatics. Um, rebuilding those things, maybe we'll hydro dip it. Let me know what you guys think of this one. The uh, Resto Mod, the JRC 54 style. You know, I can't, it, nothing's ordinary. Everything's gotta be modded and everything like that here at the Auto Shop Life. So as always guys, like, comment, subscribe. We will catch you in the next one. Signing out.